An enemy that renders your visions useless. This forest holds many surprises. Not least creatures we've never seen before. And now we know there is another who can use the Monado. Yeah. Uh, I can't wait to meet him. So you weren't just having a sneaky nap then? No. I'm just saying. You and Dunban are the only ones I know that can wield the Monado. How would this guy know how? Okay, locked and loaded. Everyone, stand back. Wow. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, she's coming round. All thanks to our medic. Are you okay? Where am I? Everything's fine. You're gonna be... <gasps> Get your hands off me! Ah! Hey, watch it! F forgive me. I... I did not mean to... Uh, sorry if we surprised you. Are you the ones who helped me? Well, something like that. Excuse me. My name is Melia. Forgive my indiscretion. I have not had the pleasure of coming into contact with the male Homs. Coming into contact? Hey, Shulk. You're creeping this lady out. Mm. Shut up, Ryan. This large one is far worse. Me! <laughs> <laughs> Melia, is it? How did you get here then? What, is there no one with you? I must apologize, but my situation does not concern you. And I shall not be divulging anything to common passers by. Duly noted, Your Ladyship. But if I were to be so bold, I'm guessing that you didn't come here alone. And you weren't just taking an afternoon nap. <laughs> and what, may I ask, are you doing here? It is rare to see Homs venture this deep into Machna Forest. We're traveling to the head of the Bionis. We've got a long journey ahead of us. The head of the Bionis? We were just figuring out how to get there when we found you. I see. Then permit me to return the favor by aiding you in your quest. Really? There is only one path to the head of the Bionis. It is the path that leads to Erith Sea. So, this Erith Sea is at the head of the Bionis? If you would be kind enough to escort me out of the forest, I will show you the way. You... you do that? Thank you, Melia. I'm Shulk. Pleased to meet you. Shulk? Ah, yes. Likewise. <sighs> she's a bit high and mighty. But she's a Homs too, right? Why is she here alone? Ain't got a clue. Ask her yourself. I'm not good with her posh accent. We shall travel to the Nopon village. Nopon village? That's where we've been heading. We reckon it's our best chance of making it to the top. Since inhabiting the region, the Nopon have been a great help. You can travel to Erith Sea from their village. It's settled. We'll make our way to the Nopon village. Very well. The Nopon inhabit a giant tree. If we follow this trail, we will be safe. I'd say with those funny moments and a new party member in tow, we are off to an excellent start. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Xenoblade Chronicles. Last time, we got here to Machna Forest, discovered the mysterious girl Melia in the woods, and had a run-in with the even more mysterious Homs, Alvis, who unlocked a new power in the Monado. This time, getting started with Melia in the lead. How about we walk back a little bit, because if we go into this gray area, you will discover the contaminated area landmark. Yeah, for whatever reason, that was not counted during that cutscene. All that aside, though, um, I'm lying a little bit. We had a tutorial that we skipped over at the start of this, so how about we talk about that now? Beware of monsters with spike abilities. From Magna Forest onwards, monsters will be packing spikes. Technically not, because we ran into one on Bionis Leg already. 
But all the same, there are three different circumstances in which spikes can be inflicted. There are counter spikes, which will counter every time you deal damage, down spikes, which they will be able to counter while suffering from topple, and close spikes, where they will hurt you from just being near them, just like that uh, Gogol that we saw in Bionis like how fitting with what they're displaying it with. You can neutralize any and all spikes in the Nata Purge, or you can reduce the damage with spike defense gems. Counter spikes are neutralized by inflicting topple, and what it doesn't tell you is that actually topple spikes can be neutralized by inflicting days, but that's really risky. This shows that inflicting topple is not your goal in every battle, and honestly, spikes are probably my least favorite part of the battle system. You can't see them coming in a lot of situations, and a lot of them are just downright unfair down the line. You'll see what I mean later. All that aside, how about we get into our new party member and see what she is like, Melia. Her talent art is Elemental Discharge. Don't laugh. The way that she works is that her arts summon elementals and she is able to discharge them onto the enemy by using this art. Again, don't laugh. Every time that you use it, which it is accessible to you all the time, the talent gauge will fill up further and further. When it is full, she will enter a burst state. Her damage will greatly increase. Not only that, but some additional arts might even open up to her depending on what you have equipped. She says about herself that her arts are quite special. It is particularly difficult to use my summoning arts such as Summon Bolt and Summon Flare. Charlotte responds with, let me see if I got this straight. While the elemental is summoned, it grants buffs, and then dismissing it deals damage, right? Indeed, so it is best if I support everyone else by granting buffs and then fire up an elemental at the end. Right, if you just launch an all-out attack, Ryan will probably find it hard to draw the monsters. Aggro is his job. So, Melia does high amounts of damage, but you need to be careful not to get carried away. As for Melia's skill tree, Serenity will improve her agility, Honesty improves critical hit ratio, and Reliability will improve physical defense. I think I'm going to switch her over to Reliability immediately. Why is that? Well, the first skill that she will learn is Ether Awareness, which increases her Ether by 25. If you haven't guessed by now, she is indeed an Ether user. You want to make sure to prioritize her with Ether-based equipment and the like. Speaking of which, I think I'd better outfit her with some gems before we get moving on, as she actually comes with a few gem slots. With all those tutorials and cutscenes out of the way, both aspects that I've praised about this game because I do like them both, how about we press on and on and on? <laughs> I couldn't resist. So, as we go onward, Melly is probably looking kind of similar to Charlotte you right about now if you haven't ever tried her. Well, she is an Aether user, her talent gauge does go up whenever she uses arts, and spoiler alert, her auto attack goes off from a distance. That's where the similarities end. Her talent art is one that Charla wishes she had. Why do I say that? Well, how about we get into a battle with this Inferno Dinos and show it off. By using Summon Flare, I do no damage right away. Instead, I cast a Strength Up buff on the entire party. Summon Bolt, same thing, but it's an Aether Up. Summon Aqua, again, same thing, but I cast Regenerate on everyone, so it's a healing over time. If I use my talent art, I will discharge the most recent one that I've casted, and in the case of Summon Aqua, I absorb health from the enemy. Summon Bolt, I will do high amounts of damage, and Summon Flare, I will do damage along with Inflict Blaze, which is damage over time. You can hang on to three elementals at a time. Whenever you discharge them to attack, the buffs go away, so you're trying to find a good balance between doing high amounts of damage and buffing the entire party. And better yet, because she primarily attacks using her talent art, that makes her amazing in chain attacks, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Getting back on the main path, this trail will take you straight to the Nopon Village, so you have a nice, easy, simple way of going to where you need to go. But if you look at the map, there are all kinds of ways to get where you're supposed to go, just like any other area, really. But, you know, you can follow that. And along it, there are Magna X, which you need for a monster quest, and a Magna Anzal, which you gotta kill one more of. Since I want to show off Melia's other tricks, because that was not her only one, how about we get into some fights right here? There we go. So, as for Melia's other abilities, she can summon these elementals and all that. She can do high amounts of damage, of course. She has Hypnotize, which is similar to Charlotte's Tranquilizer, to flick sleep on an enemy, making her good at crowd control. She has Shadow Stitch, which inflicts Bind on enemies, so we can finally do that. If you need to get away from enemies, that is really helpful. And uh, Spear Break is a melee attack. It inflicts slow on enemies and has some knockback to it. You're probably thinking that it's not going to be the greatest art, and you aren't going to be using it all that much. But, oh, nothing could be further from the truth. It might not look like much now, but Spear Break is one of the most broken arts ever, and it just makes Melia all that much greater. In fact... Melia's got only one art left to show us that she currently knows, and it's been locked to us this entire time. You need to get her talent gauge completely built up before she can use it. So let's uh, discharge more elementals and oh, got that pop up. Let's use that. And there we go. We can now use Burst End. It reduces enemy defense by 10% and Aether defense by 25%. So in addition to the huge damage it does in Burst Mode, that is an incredibly helpful attack that makes her do even more damage than she would have already. You absolutely must have her talent gauge full to use it, yes, even during a chain attack. And speaking of chain attacks, we're almost up to one. Actually, no, we are up to one. 
How about we engage this back to Anzel and just show how crazy this can get? Because her main way of doing damage being her talent art, you can get some really, really cool chains going if you know what you're doing. Looking down at Melia's battle palette, her talent gauge is still full. If you finish a battle before she exits burst mode, she will begin the next battle still in it. Really helpful to remember that. End battles as quickly as you can after entering it. Uh, oh wow, she has to run up to it. I forgot I was that far away. Start up with a spear brick. Can't think of anything better than sword drive. Worldly slash, of course, and please give me another attack. Uh, was hoping I'd get to show it off there, but you get what I mean. I could use an ether attack and get a multiplier on that. When you can recover health using Aqua and have that multiplied, it is crazy powerful. Summon Bolt with its high damage is also not bad either. And due to her amazing use in chain attacks, the fact that she does such high damage, the fact that she buffs the entire party, if I've sounded happier than usual in this video, now you know why. We got Melia by our side and nothing is going to stop us. I am so freaking happy that we have her now because I've been waiting so long to talk about her. I'll stop gushing for a moment so we can take out this Magna X. All that aside, Ryan did learn a new art, but I don't really want to get into too many more battles while we're out this way, so I think we'll show that another time. Let's see what I did there. <laughs> I couldn't resist. I never can. You guys know me. But uh, one thing that I wanted to talk about is that Melia joining has shaken things up a little bit in what kind of arts you might want to equip. Melia has some pretty good purple arts. If you can get burst end at the end of a chain attack combo, that's really nice. Dunban just learned Tempest Kick, so that can be useful for that. Charla's got Thunderbolt and Tranquilizer as well. But speaking of them, uh, Charla is kind of made a little bit obsolete with Melia joining. Don't get me wrong, Charla is still the best healer in the group by a long shot, but... For a while, Sharla had that unique ability in that she could hurt Mechon without the need for a special weapon or any sort of topple or enchant. Melia, being an Aether attacker, does that as well, and she does much more damage, so you're kind of getting the same thing, only better with her. I just wanted to acknowledge that. As much as I hate to point out Sharla's use is getting slowly taken away from her, that's what's happened here. Uh, we have a Nop on Villager right here, so perhaps we're getting close. How about we talk to the little guy? If you want to go to Frontier Village, it's safe to go this way. Nopon never lie, so you can believe me. Nopon never lie. We'll have to think about that. No. Uh, that down there is a Terra or Luga. Remember those things. They will actually be important for later. Uh, whoa! Um, very taunt. It noticed me up on top of this thing. Um, great architecture there, Nopon. Yeah, you do an excellent job making sure... Oh, we got another one right here. Um, wow, I'm easily distracted. Um, is that going to leave me alone down there? Please? Um, where is it? Like, seriously, where is it? It's... It hasn't even moved. How is it still locked on to me? Come on, let me talk to my nop on. Okay, good. <laughs> I love the voice crack there. I was like, let me talk to my nop on in peace. Let's see what you have to say. Yes, no. I love it when you talk to them and just like, yes, no. Same thing. See red light. Village just passed there. So we got a good direction on where we need to head. And uh, oh, wow. We're actually a little bit closer than I expected. We are almost to our intended destination. We got all these cool looking twigs. Things are starting to look a lot more tribal. Well, except for these green, presumably ether orbs that are just kind of hanging around here. Perhaps their civilization is more advanced than we give them credit for. We're here at the village entrance. Who is our welcoming committee? If you go away from the village and turn right, there's a big ether crystal. You can, no can tell anyone. Might have to check that out a little bit later. Let's go in. This is the entrance to Frontier Village. So this big tree is where the Nopon live. Bird Lady! Welcome back, Bird Lady! I wish to speak with the village chief. Will you permit us to enter? My pleasure! My pleasure! I shall take you to the village chief. Follow me. Welcome to Frontier Village! Or as I like to think of it as... Bionis' own little Saturn Valley, and by little, I mean 50 times as large, because this is Bionis after all. I like my Mr. Saturns, and I like the Nopon too. Home, home! Home here! Home here! Home who? Home who? Home home everywhere! Me want touch home home! 
Me want nibble hum hum. Hum hum taste pee. Hum hum scary. Oh. Nopon of Frontier Village. Melia Antigua has returned. I request an audience with your chief. Chief, will you hear my request? Melia here. Bad lady here. Uh, Melia back. Bird lady back. Bird lady? My dear Melia, it's good to see you again so soon. And you look so well. And what of your men? They are at one with the Bionis. They sacrificed their lives so that I might escape. But this is not my reason for coming. These Homs need your help. Will you be so kind as to listen to their request? What could a Hom Hom need of me? They require safe passage to Aerith Sea. I see no reason to deny them. And Melia, what of you? I have unfinished business in this region. Once these Homs are safely on their way, I shall be on mine as well. That girl. Something's troubling her. We found her half dead and all alone. But I don't suppose she'll tell us the reason any time soon. Maybe we can help. I'll go and talk to her. Shulk, you are doing a terrible job covering up why you really want to go over and talk to her, and Ryan learns a new skill while he is just getting the shaft to the left and right here. Let's talk to Chief Dunga right here. I love the name Dunga. It seems Melia went to the diving board up at the top. I have to say, if the Nopon have not sold you, don't worry. I was the same way on my first playthrough. They grow on you over time. But as for their home, I think you'll be sold on that right away. So this area, ignoring the super buff man wearing a tail and some boxer short- Actually, that was a brief- <laughs> never mind. Ignoring all that, look at this area, just freaking tall. It's like a hollowed out tree and there's all those scaffoldings with the knob on her living on. Oh, it's all so pretty. I love it. <laughs> okay, I'll stop utterly fanboying here for a moment to show you just how big of an area this is. Yeah, even the towns. If we go to Frontier Village on the map, Look at all those floors that we have ahead of us. On top of that, we also have one below us right now. But, um, without all that, we have an unnamed Nopon Villager right here. And what do we do when we get to a new area? Well, we grab all the generic unnamed characters' quests just because they're going to tell us, oh, hey, go kill three of these things, or oh, go collect two of those. And we might as well grab these for some easy free stuff while we are going through this area, if we're going to be going through this anyway and coming across these monsters. So... How about I let you familiarize yourself with the very inviting, very peaceful sounding music that plays in this area. It is one of my personal favorites and I listened to it on loop for a long time while preparing for the series because it just felt so welcoming. Those are all the generic quests I wanted to grab on the first floor. Uh, there is a shop over this way. I don't feel it's necessary for us to go there quite yet, so we'll be holding off for a little while. Don't worry, we'll go there later. And there are more quests in Frontier Village than what I've grabbed, uh, rather of the generic variety, I should specify. But they're all on different floors, and I think we should explore this area together a little bit and not just speed up the whole thing. So we'll grab those as we go up. There's a weapon shop specifically right here. I think it's the first time I've seen one that is specifically called that. Uh, no need to go there quite yet, of course. Uh, if we go over here, there's this rather strange-looking mushroom that's acting strange. We love roast potatoes, afraid of getting burnt- uh, to get burned, though. What about cool potato from Land of Hom Hom? Sound like not get burned if we touch cool potato. Me wish to sample it. Didn't even look at us to say any of that. He was just talking to himself about how much he wants potatoes, and we're just like, oh, hey, we got one. The cool potato is a Colony 9 collectible, and I'd be willing to bet you got at least two of these by now, so even if you're not going out for quests, you might as well accept this and get some free money. We switch things to daytime and go back a little bit. Oh, wow, I almost fell off right there. Another regular old Nopon villager who's got something nice for us. The breezy Zolos run like wind and get blown by the air. It's not good for any of us. 
Can friends make Breezy Solo slow down? Sounds like a challenge quest. Indeed it is. We have challenge number two right here. Haha. <laughs> Up next, uh, how about we just head on up? We got propellers around this area, we got these bridges that don't look like they should be able to support Ryan and his heavy armor, yet they somehow do. I guess don't underestimate some twigs and, and rope. I almost said twigs and sticks. I guess that makes sense as well. Got loads of landmarks in this area. Seriously, walk around as much as you possibly can, because it is definitely worth your time. Uh, do we have anything here? Uh, actually, I think we do if we switch it to nighttime. In fact, we do. At nighttime, looking at these crates. Dediba, remember? Zazadan over in Satoru Marsh is saying, Hey, if you ever meet somebody named Dediba, come and see him. You're too slow. You're too slow. Do you know how long it's been since I asked you to bring it? Huh? You're not the usual guy. What's going on? Dediba, no why. Hom Hom brought it. Hand it over. Come on now. Demanding. Uh, he apparently really wanted it. Well, we brought it to you, yeah, now. Well, that's that. Okay, let's see what he had to say. Huh? You already finished your job, now leave me alone! Daddy Butt is very busy! We completed a gift, uh, yeah, a gift with a question mark at the end of it is right if that's the way he treats us giving him something for free. You'll want to remember him for a little bit later, as he is a little bit important. Wait a minute, he was like putting his hands on his head and looking all weird, what did he have to say? The, sh the chief personally asked me to manage pollen orbs here. Recording production output is an amazing job. Make too many pollen orbs, everything will break down. Balance between supply and demand is ideal. Well, okay, I thought he'd have some more interesting things to say than that after the way that he treated us, but I guess not. Things are gonna get a little bit complicated in the things that I want to pick up while we're in this area, so bear with me a little bit, because... Yeah, it is going to get in extremely complicated. Not a, as if the layout of this area wasn't really complex enough, then yeah, this is really gonna get it. Uh, you are gonna gain so much experience from exploring this place. From getting to a new level, that will get you experience. And frequently, when you go up to a new level, that'll be a landmark in itself, so you will get even more experience from having gone there. So, you are just going to be rolling in experience from walking around this area. And uh, speaking of rolling in experience, uh, what are you doing? You're like running in place towards your friend. He wants you to get flower bracelet to girlfriend, but it get eaten by Terex. I probably passed safely through gut of Terex in one piece. Must be lying somewhere near. Friends, please search for it. You want me to get something that a Terex pooped out? In the forest. Uh, okay, well, okay, she'll clean it up. She's just like, oh, you look disgusted. <laughs> well, gee, I wonder why. Let's, uh, switch the time back. And let's be lazy and skip travel back to the Pollen Works landmark that we just discovered because there is a way up right over there, and I let skip travel do my walking for me, even though it's not really all that far. Still, we have Ricky's house right here. Must be a pretty important dude to deserve his own name on this landmark. Uh, do you have anything interesting to say? Do Hamam need Gawago for something? If not, then please excuse Gawago, as Gawago have work to do. Uh, is there anybody with anything to say around here? Perhaps if we change the time. Hmm, doesn't seem like it. For such an important person, seems like he is fairly not talked about in this village. <laughs> Head up to the archaeology level, and man, these Nopon have it all. Man, they're gonna have, like, an everything but the kitchen sink level in this area or something like that. We have yet another Nopon villager. And he has even more stuff for us to pick up. We are, I, already, I would say rolling in it, but I've kind of already said that. We are, no, we are drowning in things to do in this area. That's the best way I can put it. Sorry about the cut there. Just wanted to check my menus really quick to make sure I had everything squared away. You know how that stuff is. Micromanaging and whatnot. Yeah, I tend to cut it out when it's just me double-checking things. We have yet another Nopon Villager up this way with yet another quest for us, as you would guess. Based on what he's saying, it already sounds like a challenge quest. Sure enough, it is. Now, I don't know why, but a lot of walkthroughs that I've seen around the internet don't note that there are challenge quests in Frontier Village at all. I'm not sure why, but they just seem to not do that. But I don't want to harp on that all that much. Uh, one cool thing is that this area was indeed foreshadowed. I know that a lot of areas are, but if you're curious at all, that huge tree that you saw way off in the distance when we first entered Magna Forest from the Bionis interior, yeah, that was this area. And not only that, but we found Melia. Yeah, she went all the way up here. Uh, nothing personal, but I get the feeling she didn't really want to talk with you, Shulk. Melia, you're welcome to come with us. Is it true? Were you alone in the forest? <laughs> that thing must be stopped by my hand. This is my pledge to those that have died. Is it... Wounded. I see. The Telethia is hurt and lies in rest. 
Wounded by a girl. Wounded by a girl? You don't mean you're going to fight the Telethia? <gasps> How do you know of the Telethia? When I went to collect the Aether Crystals, some Telethia attacked me. I managed to destroy them and get away. You defeated Telethia? Who... who are you?